Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Fund It Fast Chat. I am Rochelle Butler, Energy Manager with the San Joaquin Valley Clean Energy Organization. Thank you so much for being here with us this morning. We are going to go ahead and get started, but first, um, just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, please make note that all of your microphones have been muted upon joining the call. We only do that just to minimize uh, any background noise. If you have any questions at all, please, I highly encourage you to go ahead and submit those questions using the fast chat. Uh, you can do so at any point during the presentation. We'll have some time toward the end to address any of those questions. Uh, last thing before we get started, I would love for everyone to connect with us. You can do so on any one of our many platforms. You can find us on Twitter, on Instagram, on Spotify, um, or you can just reach out the old fashioned way by email or by phone. As always, you can get access to any of our resources by going to our website. That's sjvcleanenergy.org. Once again, that's sjvcleanenergy.org. And without any further ado, we are going to kick off the second installment of our three part EV summer series with a very special guest. Um, I would like for you all to please welcome to the Fund It Fast Chat, Omar Ferris, Transportation Electrification Advisor for Southern California Edison. Go ahead and take it away, Omar. Hey, good morning, everybody. So uh, wanted to chat with you all today about the newly launched uh, Charge Ready program. Uh, so what the Charge Ready program is, is a program uh, designed to deploy what we call make ready infrastructure to support the installation of electric vehicle charging stations. Now, the, the operative term is make ready. So what that entails is everything from uh, the source power transformer all the way to the conduit stub out where uh, or make ready position where the customer would actually install the um, charging station. So next slide, please, Rochelle. Okay, so this is a uh, quick breakdown of the different program offering. So um, you'll see that we do have a pretty large emphasis on multifamily, but also you know, quite a robust offering for uh, the commercial government space as well. So uh, charging or um, swim lane number one, which is the charging infrastructure and rebate is the largest piece of our program. Uh, so this program is the piece that is uh, designed to provide that make ready infrastructure I just talked about um, to the EVSC stub out. And in addition to the make ready infrastructure actually provide a rebate for the charging station itself uh, of up to $2,900 per port. Um, the rebate is uh, contingent upon your uh, disadvantaged community status uh, and whether or not you are a Fortune 1000 company. But the, uh, the details are in our program guidelines. Uh, this piece of the program is designed to support roughly 19,500 level one or level two ports. Uh, with 50% of those ports, uh, we have a target in disadvantaged communities. Uh, disadvantaged communities uh, are defined by the Cal Envirus Green map, Cal Envirus Green 3.0, which is um, managed by the state of California. Uh, we do have about a 30% um, target for multifamily properties within our charging infrastructure and rebate program. Uh, we do have a small carve out for DC fast charging. Again, this is 200 ports out of the um, total nearly uh, uh, 20,000 of this uh, piece of the program. Uh, that is pending CPUC approval. We do have the funding carve out, but there's some site prioritization criteria that we're ironing out. Uh, we don't anticipate that offering will be ready uh, until probably this time next year. Um, the next piece of our program is the turnkey installation, which is reserved for multifamily properties uh, located in disadvantaged communities. So what the turnkey option uh, offers is the full make ready infrastructure. And in addition to that, Edison actually uh, procures and installs the charging stations uh, on behalf of the customer of record. Um, again, reserved for multifamily properties in disadvantaged communities, um, and we do have a cap of 2,500 ports, so um, relatively small in comparison to the uh, 19,500 in charging infrastructure and rebate. Uh, the last option that we have here is our new construction rebate, which incentivizes multifamily developers to install charging stations uh, that exceed the uh, local Cal Green code. Uh, 
Um, so what uh, Edison does is offers $3,500 per port uh, to bridge the gap between having the uh, make ready infrastructure on the ground, which is required by Cal Green Code, uh, and get those charging stations installed for those uh, new construction multifamily properties. So these are pro properties that are either <clears throat> currently in construction or have taken a certificate of occupant a certificate of occupancy uh, January first, twenty seventeen, or later, um, which is when the uh, the original Calgary code was uh, effective. Uh, this piece of our program is roughly uh, fifteen thousand level one or level two ports, with about a fifty percent target in uh, disadvantaged communities. The three programs uh, do comprise roughly thirty eight thousand uh, plus ports for total program funding of four hundred and thirty two million over the next four years. Next slide, please. Okay, this is really the, the slide that um, you know conveys the value proposition of the program, in my opinion. So, um, typical scope of work for any time a customer is requesting a new service from the utility, any utility for that matter, is that utility side infrastructure, which is the gray side of the dotted line. So, what typically happens in a traditional work order with the utility is that they provide you. Uh, the transformer, which they would set on a transformer pad, um, and then they would pull wire through your ducts and structures and tie into their meter, which is set on your panel, and then you would run, you as the customer would run the power um, to the final destination where it's actually needed. The scope of the charge ready program actually covers both utility side and customer side infrastructure. So Edison sets a transformer on a pad that they pour, pulls wire through their own ducts and structures, connects to their meter, uh, which is uh, mounted on a panel that is provided by Edison, and then Edison provides that conduit and wire up to that make ready stub out where you as the customer would come in and install the actual charging stations themselves. Uh, so down below, you'll see the different program uh, options. We talked about the SCE built infrastructure largely already, which does take care of both sides of the uh, both the utility and customer side infrastructure. You do have an option if you uh, uh, so desire to manage the customer side infrastructure if you see fit. Um, so we would still provide the uh, utility side infrastructure and then you can choose to manage that customer side infrastructure uh, design and build it and take a rebate of, of up to 80% of SCE's cost of what that infrastructure uh, would have cost SCE, not to exceed 100% uh, of your own uh, out-of-pocket costs. Uh, you'll see that there is a four-port minimum for an application, and we do ask that those ports be co-located to be considered for uh, funding through our program. Um, there, you'll see that uh, the new construction rebate does have a single port minimum. We are just looking um, to incentivize uh, above and beyond that code. So if you built uh, you know, one port over that code, we would uh, provide you with that $3,500 per port uh, rebate. Um, one additional piece that I did want to call out before we move on is that maintenance and networking rebate. So this is reserved for multifamilies and disadvantaged communities that choose to own and operate their charging stations and not use the turnkey installation. So that maintenance and networking rebate helps to offset uh, maintenance and networking costs for the lifetime of the uh, program agreement. Uh, and it is paid as a one-time per port rebate uh, upon installation of the charging stations. Next slide, please. Okay, so just wanted to cover a couple of program requirements. So kind of the bare minimum and, and what we look for. So. Um, what we look for in the applicant is um, a SCE customer that is a non-single family home. The, the term non-residential is perhaps a little misleading because uh, we do deploy these at multifamily properties, um, but a non-single family home is, is what we're truly targeting. Uh, um, so you must own, lease, manage, or be the customer of record uh, at the charging site. Uh, if you are not the owner of the property, you would need to obtain consent from the property owner. Uh, we would require an easement um, to be signed to give Edison reasonable access to their equipment for the purposes of maintenance and repairs. Uh, and the project site, of course, must be located in SCE's service territory. Uh, on the deployment side, we do require, as I said, a four port minimum um, with the exception of the new construction rebate. Um, when we do eventually roll out our DC fast charging offering, um, that will be a two port minimum and there will be a requirement to make those DC fast chargers publicly accessible. 
We do require that the charging equipment must uh, be separately metered. Um, and that is optional for the new construction rebate, um, but from a, a cost standpoint, it is generally more advantageous to separately meter EV charging because we do have um, pretty attractive EV charging rate plans that actually have no demand charges until 2024, at which point we'll begin phasing them in over the subsequent six years at a rate of 16.7% per year. Uh, there is also a requirement that the EV meter, uh, only the EV meter be enrolled in a demand or enroll in a demand response program uh, upon um, taking service at the uh, EV meter. Uh, I do want to add that this is an enrollment requirement. There is not a stipulation to remain enrolled for the lifetime of uh, the program agreement. Um, on the equipment side, we do require you to select from our approved product list for the charging stations. It is extensive and there are uh, a number of OEMs on the approved product list, so we are confident that you'll find something to suit your needs. Um, we do require that you keep the equipment operation, operational for a period of 10 years, which is the duration of the program agreement. Um, that's not to say you couldn't replace the equipment. Um, part of the way through that 10-year agreement, we do require operational um, uh, equipment that is on our approved product list to be installed at the site for that period of 10 years. Um, we do require that you provide us a monthly charging data, which is done via a networking agreement with your uh, EVSE vendor, uh, EVSE is a electric vehicle supply equipment, so your charging station vendor, um, you would engage with them on a um, networking agreement that would provide us with that uh, charging data. Um, and we do ask that if you make these uh, charging stations publicly accessible, that you do report the prices that you charge to EV drivers uh, for the service of the charging. Uh, we don't regulate that chart, we don't regulate those fees, we just ask to know what they are for reporting purposes. Uh, which is kind of the same reason we're asking for the monthly charging data, is that we do have a, um, a hefty reporting requirement to the uh, state of California as this is a, a ratepayer funded program. Next slide. All right, so where to apply? So sce.com slash EV business uh, is our main landing page for all things transportation electrification at SCE. Uh, it's an extremely helpful uh, and easy to navigate uh, web page um, with a number of different, uh, again, swim lanes for what you're looking for. Uh, but if you go to sce.com slash evbusiness slash charge ready slash ready to apply, uh, you'll be dropped into the page that you see on your screen. And if you scroll uh, about two thirds of the way down, you'll see that section number three that says sign into your SCE account to apply. Uh, you'll click on apply now and you'll be prompted to register for a uh, SCE charge ready application portal fairly simple to uh, register for and then extremely easy to apply for as well and that is it for my presentation i'll kick it back to rochelle So Rochelle, I do see a, I see you're, you're muted, but I do see a question in the chat from Pam Bold. Hi, Pam, good to see you on here. Um, so your question is for new construction, if a project is still in development stage, can funding be reserved? Uh, yes, the answer is yes to that. So I would definitely suggest um, that um, the developer does apply. Uh, and again, that is reserved for uh, multifamily properties. Great, Perfect. Thank you. thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, I was muted. I got us um, off the presentation mode, um, and that that is the that's the only question I see in the chat. Um, I do have a couple more questions um, that Omar was so nice to provide for us, just in case folks couldn't think of things to ask. And so I think we have time for a couple of of those. Yeah. Um, Perfect. Um, so the first question here that we have is, is do all of the charging stations need to be located together, Omar, or how does that work? Yeah, so what the way we look at a, a single application in that four port minimum is that there's a minimum of four ports that do need to be co-located together, and that comes down to the efficiency with which we 
um, you know, serve that, uh, those charging stations. Uh, we do have cost per port metrics. So you could imagine that if you spread those out uh, over uh, a large space that uh, the cost feasibility would decrease rather quickly. Um, that being said, you can apply for um, as many charging stations as you like, or you could have multiple uh, applications for a single parking lot. If you have a larger parking lot and you want five on one side of the parking lot, six on the other side of the parking lot, you can apply accordingly. But a uh, minimum of four ports need to be co-located and would be treated as a single application. Okay, awesome. Um, I have another one here. Um, what criteria is used to determine whether a project is awarded entry into the program? So the, the number one metric that we look at, at least right now with the program being so fresh and with program funding uh, being so abundant uh, at this point is the cost per port. So we have a uh, prescribed cost per port threshold uh, that was given to us by the um, uh, by the CPC. So the cost per port is the number one uh, thing that we look at. Um, the other things we look at to consider if, you know, that cost per port number is perhaps a little bit high um, and, you know, whether or not we are able to make additional consideration is, is the DAC status. As you saw on my earlier slides, we do have um, pretty hefty goals surrounding um, deploying these charging stations in disadvantaged communities. Um, we also have individual segment goals, like for multifamily. Um, so if we have a multifamily located in a DAC that is maybe a little bit above our cost per port threshold, uh, we may make additional considerations for those, uh, for those particular customers. So that's the primary criteria that we use. Okay, awesome. And we're, we're almost at time, but I think we have, we have uh, time for one more question for you, Omar. Um, what is the approximate timeline for a project, say, from the phase of application through to completion? What does that timeline look like? Yeah, so I would say um, your best case scenario would be somewhere in the neighborhood of nine months because Edison does manage both the uh, utility and customer side infrastructure. There's a lot of coordination uh, between some of our vendors that we use for um, you know, not only design, but also construction. So nine months is, is probably a fair assumption if you're, uh, you know, private sector. I understand with local government, those timelines could be extended because of board approvals um, and certain, you know, requirements in terms of getting bids for, for charging stations. So local government, I would say, is probably closer to 11 or 12 months, uh, whereas private industry could probably knock it out in about nine months. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Omar. I guess I'll I'll go ahead and wrap us up. I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, I just I do want to remind everyone that's on the call. Please look out for our follow up email later on today. Um, don't worry if you weren't able to jot everything down. We'll package everything together for you and have it sent out. That email is going to include a recording. A uh, link to the recording of this presentation. It's also going to include links to the resources that Omar um, shared with us earlier, um, where to apply for the program and, and information about the program, as well as any links to any related fast chats that we've done in the past if you want to do some additional research. Um, take a quick second and add us to your email contact list. We want to make sure that you're receiving our communication so you can stay up to date uh, with what's going on around the partnership. And um, what's next for the Fast Chat? Uh, well, we are looking to wrap up our three-part EV Summer Series next month with the California Vehicle Rebate Program. I hope to see you there. And I do want to thank Omar again uh, for being with us and for taking the time out to give us this really great information and the presentation today. Um, I hope everyone has a wonderful, wonderful week. I hope you all stay safe and stay healthy.